Hi everyone, I hope everyone's well. Well, I weren't going to do a video about the Toni Morris stuff, but who can resist, eh? So, as everybody will know, yesterday an announcement went out on JW.org that Toni Morris, or Anthony Morris III, is no longer a member of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. So, from the way that that was worded, any of us who have ever been Jehovah's Witnesses will know that basically... Um, he's been deleted or he's had a, a forced resignation. Um, had it been that he was leaving for good reasons, there would have been a thank you for your years of service. Um, thank you to you and Sister Morris for all you've done. We wish you well. There was none of that. Um, the announcement was just very curt. Um, Tony Morris is no longer a member of the governing body. It was exactly the same as when an elder gets deleted in the congregation. Um, if he's maybe he's gone off for good reasons, you know, he's had to, I don't know, if he's nursing a sick wife or something, they'll say thank you to him for all of his service. But um, if he's been up to secret sinning, it will just be uh, he's no longer an elder. And um, as most of us know, that are either disfellowshipped or disassociated. The wording is similar. When we um, come out of the organisation, we are no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So <laughs> speculation is rife in um, the XJW community as to the reasons. And of course, um, the top thing that people are thinking of is his drink problem um, because as XJWs, we're all aware of the Bottlegate scandal and since then um, a lot of us have noticed how he slurs his speech and he just looks particularly unhealthy. Um, and so that's the top speculation. A lot of JWs won't be aware of the Bottlegate scandal and so, you know, they might not necessarily uh, be thinking along the same lines. But we all saw, didn't we, that on a Sunday morning when all the rest of the witnesses were at the meeting, Tony was down at the liquor store stocking up on uh, copious supplies of Macallan whiskey and giving advice on different scotch and whiskies and saying what his wife likes to drink and all that. Um, and even had an opportunity there to give a witness and didn't take it up, uh, just preferring to talk about the drink. So, yeah, that's the top speculation with the... Uh, with the apostates um some people are actually saying that this is the the first case of its kind since ray franz um but there have actually been two other uh, resignations from the governing body um so for those of you that don't know you and chitty resigned amid um allegations of homosexuality um, so obviously we know that in the organisation that is a definite no-no. Um, he wasn't disfellowshipped because uh, basically you want to keep your enemies close to home. If you uh, disfellowship people that know too much, it's going to happen what happened with Ray Franz, ain't it? They're going to come out. Like Ray Franz was, was put out and uh, basically... Um, as an old... In his old age with no other, you know kind of uh, job prospects or anything he was just put out on his ear really with his wife and he took to writing a book which basically exposed the whole organization so uh, for on my view when there's somebody that high up in the organization they don't usually get disfellowshipped um so yeah you and chitty got moved on i think he was transferred to another branch and there was also the leo greenlee scandal he um, resigned from the governing body amid allegations of pedophilia. Somebody, um, I think there was multiple allegations, but somebody did even claim that he had molested them in, in Bethel when they were visiting with their parents. Um, and that basically, obviously, that never got reported to the police. Um, but the allegations were there and he uh, resigned. But he was never disfellowshipped. So yeah, it's not the first time it's happened. So, but but the difference is obviously back then the governing body members were not as visible um, as they are today. Like today, the the Jehovah's Witnesses could turn on their telly every day and watch a governing body member and feel like they're getting to know them. So, yeah, the broadcasting weren't really a, a wise move on their part. 
because not only can they um, uh, try you know different forms of propaganda with people but also kind of lets people in on seeing them for what they really are they're just you know a bumbling load of old out of shape just judgmental old busybodies um, and the worst of them was Tony Morris who can forget talks that where he mentioned human hot dogs um, or uh, what else was there there's it's been untold talks of tiny tight pants and uh, the one about uh, women shouldn't be wearing spanks it's not for Christian women um, the one about have you got blood on your hands if you've not been out on the service in the past few weeks you know for Jehovah's Witnesses um, the one for sisters not to consider dating and marrying a, a brother unless he's a ministerial servant like the guy just he just goes off on a tangent and just makes up all his own stuff what about I tell you this one who remembers this one um, if your kid wants to get their driving license but they're not yet baptized that's a no-no so I can if you just think about it you can just think untold stuff that Tony Morris is just blurted out and he just tramples through everything in this organ everyone in the organization so yeah he's a liability and he's a liability in the time that he's been in and he'll be a liability if he goes out so they've got to try and contain him now so I reckon he'll be uh, kept within uh, probably kept within the Bethel and uh, they'll try and just like uh, close him off from from public view <laughs> but anyway time will tell I might be right I might be wrong um, yeah it's interesting it's interesting seeing this play out it, it, it'll be uh, it, it'll be funny to see because now there, there will probably have to be a talks on you know for people that are speculating about not speculating and then you know like if someone gets disfellowshipped and then you get or they get reproved and then we get like a local needs that basically tells you what they've done without telling you who it was we might get something like that with tony morris so that'll be interesting um the thing that this situation really made me think about was partly the reason why i left was when i started to realize that the whole Holy Spirit thing with Jehovah's Witnesses makes no sense. So they they always claim that they're uh, that the appointed men have been appointed by Holy Spirit, but in my experience, I knew two. I knew an elder in um, in my London congregation that I was in, who had um, been the presiding overseer and the and the Kobe for many years before it came out that before he was even in the Witnesses. Um, he had groomed and had an abusive relationship with a with a young girl and subsequently he's been to prison for that so he, he's obviously had to step down and, and go to prison because she eventually went to the police and then in the congregation that I was last in in Brandon they um, appointed a brother as ministerial servant even though they knew he had an allegation um, that was why he couldn't get appointed in his previous congregation because this allegation was hanging over him and even though the brothers in the congregation that I was in knew that that was the reason they still uh, made him up when he came to our congregation until a subsequent allegation come out and then he was forced to step down but that um, that order came from Bethel excuse me yeah that order came down from the Bethel so this whole Holy Spirit thing, appointed by Holy Spirit, that was really, really um, difficult for me at the time. And I started to realise that basically it's a sham. They also used to teach, and I don't know if it's still the same, can't, it can't be that different. They used to teach that if someone was secret sinning in a congregation, that Jehovah would withdraw his Holy Spirit from the congregation. So that congregation would start to have problems and you would see that it's not thriving and because Jehovah has withdrawn his spirit from the congregation. So things would start to go wrong or appear to be wrong. Um, I wonder if that same application could be made to the governing body. So for you Jehovah's Witnesses that are watching, because obviously I know that you're watching because I seem to get a lot of feedback from it. Um, I wonder if you've ever considered that, that um, if there's somebody secret sinning on the governing body, what would be what has been the effect on the uh, proceedings of the governing body? 
since that time that that person has been secret sinning, would Jehovah have um, revoked his Holy Spirit from that organisation? I mean, that's that's your belief system. Personally, I, I, I'm, I'm not into all that anymore. But going by your own teachings, that was um, that was always an accepted teaching when I was in that. If you saw that congregation had problems and wasn't thriving, it was because Jehovah had withdrawn his Holy Spirit. It reminds me of the time when we were first moving from London to Brandon and we went and visited the neighbouring congregation first, which was Fetford, and a brother and sister there, Cindy and Richard, they... Um, we told them we were thinking of moving to Brandon and they were like, oh, don't move to Brandon. There's a, there's a lot of problems in that congregation. And they kind of insinuated there's no Holy Spirit there. Um, but as it was, we ignored that and uh, much to our own regret because we subsequently found out the reasons why it had such a poor reputation. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the whole Tony Morris thing. I'll be watching this space with keen anticipation. I don't think they're going to... Uh, I don't think they'll disfellowship him because <laughs> he's got the potential to bring down the whole tower if they disfellowship him. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting. But anyway, I just thought I'd jump on and uh, waffle on a little bit. Hope you're all well and hopefully I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.